Welcome to Quick Conversations with Karen and Carrie. I'm Carrie, the Joy Coach, and I help women live and work with joy. And I'm Karen. I empower women to live and work with passion. So we want to get our conversation started. I didn't spill water on myself this time. That's great. That's great. So in our last video, we talked about aligning with passion and joy. And you heard Carrie and I give kind of what our thoughts were about that. We thought it'd be really cool and fun to bring in other speakers to talk about this same topic. And I'd like to get other perspectives on this as well. And we'd like to introduce our friend, colleague, and fellow coach, Beth Myers, today. And Beth, we're excited to hear your perspective. So why don't we start out, let, tell us a bit about you and your story. Oh, well, thank you, first of all, so much for inviting me to your conversations, because I just love, love, love both of you, and I love what you're doing. And I'm just so grateful that you um, reached out and said, hey, would you like to have a conversation with us? Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. We wouldn't do this without you, Beth. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so um, my name is Beth Myers, and I am a certified law of attraction, uh, master uh, life coach and empowerment coach. And my focus has really been on women and girls uh, in particular, um, expanding that to all spiritual seekers, really, and helping people on their journey to thrive and not just survive in life. And uh, my journey has been, um, I was, a re I'm retired from the school system. I was in the school system for 31 years as a, a first grade teacher. And then I was an elementary school counselor um, for, for most of my career. And uh, I always have loved to be in service of others and to assist um, kids to reach their potential, um, uh, be living their best life, um, and helping their families and the staff to do that as well. And I retired to my adventures that I am now on and uh, my coaching business. And I also am the assistant to Christy Whitman, um, who is a law of attraction uh, coach, uh, mentor. Um, she is a transformational leader and the woman who we all got connected through, right? Um, and uh, so I just am so grateful every day to be able to uh, reach out globally. One of the things that I loved was working with the school community and I worked in several different communities through my career. Um, but I always had this passion to travel and to get to connect with people all over the world. And I get to do that now with working with uh, Christy Whitman International. So um, anyway, I am just grateful to be here with both of you. And just tell me what, what you'd like to have conversation about today. Well, uh, our first question for you is how do you live and work with passion and joy? Well, that is a really good question because I like asking good questions. Yeah, really powerful <laughs> questions. <laughs> and the way I live um, with joy and with passion is seeing that it, it's a journey, right? It's a, it's a road that we choose, not something that just appears out of the ethers. It's something that we choose. We consciously decide to be in alignment and bring in that joy to bring in that passion um and you know I've, I've been really really good over time supporting others to do that and the way that i found for myself what was most important was doing it for myself that i had to start with me and bringing that joy in, bringing allowing that passion to come through um and that starts with aligning with the divine and you know, connecting upward, being that co-creator. And the more that I have leaned into and, <clears throat> excuse me, done that, especially over the last six years, I have opened my faith portal um, or that um, just, not just trusting, not just trusting that joy is possible in every moment, not just trusting that I can live my passion, having full faith, that I can create that. I can co-create that with the divine. So that's really where I um, live and work um, with joy and passion is by aligning with the divine each and every day. 
asking for that joy to come through each day in every interaction that I have, that it comes th forth with love, that it comes forth with kindness. Um, I would say that's one of my superpowers is kindness and uh, being able to connect with anyone, whether it's somebody I don't know at the grocery store um, and then I send them love and light. Um, maybe they're having a rough day and I don't have to even say anything to them. I can just do it by intending that. Um, and for me, that brings great joy. That is mm -hmm. part of my passion of helping and serving others. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> go ahead. I was just going to say, jumping on something that you said, you know, and I think I probably had a similar situation in that we you know, we worked for others. We worked in jobs where we were serving others for yes. a really long time. Yes. Um, did you find it hard learning? Oh, well, I guess during that time, do you feel like you were um, servicing yourself and putting yourself first? Or or did you find yourself in a situation where like your students and, and everybody else came first? Did you have a transition there? I had a transition along the way. Um, I really, at the more personal development and therapy and coaching that I kept d diving into um, all throughout my career, I, I kept just, it, it kept just up leveling um, gotcha. for me. Um, I always was in service of others and sometimes at my detriment, I wasn't filling my own cup at times mm -hmm. and I would feel that. And I would know, okay, I need to do something to take care of myself. What is that going to be? Is it going to go to be going to the art therapist this time? Is it going to be going to the dance and movement therapist? Is it going to be going to a yoga class? Is it going to be going, um, you know, I would cut exercise out of my, my um, a day if things were really heavy at work that day. And I'd be there till 7 p.m. at night sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, because I was trying to catch up on things because I was always if there was something that was needed, I would take care of it. That's what I loved about being a school counselor is the flexibility and the fluidity of serving in the moment. But then there becomes a time that that becomes very bombarding if you're not um, filling yourself up and, and, and moving that, um, opening your heart to, to help people from that space instead of feeling like you have to shut down and then you're not serving anybody. And so as I learned more tools, um, particularly over the last six years, uh, I have opened up through more meditation and centering myself, grounding myself um, so that I can be in those environments where the energy can be very strong and I have different tools to help me deal with that. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's, you know, something that especially hits women are, are filling ourselves up last, you know, yes. and that's, that's mm -hmm. kind of, I wondered if you had that experience too. Yes. Yes. I think that's definitely an epidemic that's, yes. that's for the it female mm -hmm. um, and the women out there is not filling our cups up because we are the ones that nurture and, you know, care, give and, and stuff like that. Um, what would be you know, because everybody's world is busy. Everybody's mm -hmm. busy. You know, women have multi things they're doing, you know, kids mm -hmm. and work or, you know, all their responsibilities. What's one thing, one simple thing that, that they can do to move into living with joy and living with passion? What's one simple thing mm -hmm. you think would work, would be beneficial to start? With? I, I believe that taking time for yourself, setting aside a time in your schedule. I'm really good when I schedule time. Um, and I found that, that, that I show up when there's something on my, on my schedule. And think of it as like, if you're one of those people, like I have been a people pleaser, <laughs> mm -hmm. wanting to do everything for everybody else. And, and so it's being able to say, I'm doing this for me during this time, it used to be I would get up in the morning at 5 a.m. and I would get up and that was my dedicated time to journal, to um, meditate, to take a walk, a meditative walk, um, just really soaking up the, 
um, beauty of uh, a walk in nature. And maybe I had my earbuds in and I was listening to a meditation or something, but something that feeds your soul. Find a dedicated time every day. Maybe that's a bubble bath for you and listening to music that you love. It's not the same for everybody. And um, it's, you know, it, it, something you've never done before. It's still something that you can learn to do. I never thought I could meditate. And I now can stay awake during a meditation <laughs> and start to visualize that meditation when I used to fall asleep. And I knew my subconscious was getting it, but not my conscious self like I wanted to get it. And um, so it's, it's a growth process and it's being gentle with yourself. So the one thing I would say is schedule time for yourself. Um, you know, for some people, it may be locking the door when you're in the bathroom and mm -hmm. I'm putting a little sign on it saying, I'm, I'm not available for 15 minutes. You know? <laughs> I am hiding in the bathroom. Darn That's it. right. That's right. And for, and for some, some women, can be men as well, it's taking that time and making sure that you honor that time for yourself. And you have to start putting those boundaries up sometimes um, so that other people get that. That it's not that, you know, mommy's in the bathroom, but you, you don't come knock on the door during that time, you know, unless the house is on fire or you're choking or, you know, something. But, it, you know, it's not for, hey, mom, he's picking on me and get him to stop. So, um, you know, other people, uh, you treat, um, how you treat yourself is how you treat other people to treat you. So by you filling your own cup and taking that dedicated time for yourself, that will transfer to other people and they will start to understand that and they will start to respect that boundary. Nice. Now I have to teach the cat that. I shut the bathroom door and I get the little legs coming in. I'm like, oh. Yes, yes. And sometimes we need a little break from them too. They love our energy, but. Right. Yeah, so. Well, it's nice for us all to be recovering people pleasers. Yes. I think we're all in that boat. Yep. So, there we yep. go. <laughs> there is a club for that. <laughs> yes, you have a, a motto. Right. I promise myself not to be a people pleaser. I yes. promise to keep my boundaries and set my time schedules. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I love it. There you go. There's our new That's little right. motto. I promise. So. Yes, a promise to ourselves for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's why really do you what think, why do you think, um, living with joy and passion is important to moving the awareness, the consciousness of the, the earth, the, you know, our communities, even, you know, a broader view. Why do you think that's important? Because it all starts with us, you know, the song, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. That's really, truly what it's all about. The more um, the divine wants us to live with joy and love and passion every day. And we get in this mundane survival mode of just got to do this, got to do that, got to, you know, and, and we get, go through our lives. And many people go through their lives from the time they're born, well, but not when you're a kid, because as when you're a kid, most of the time you are living in that divine joy, right? So it's yes. learning how to be more kid-like, bringing that into your life. That's why I loved being around kids because their joy was just, you know, contagious. <laughs> and so uh, we can do that each and every day in each of the moments. And we're not, when we're not feeling that way, recognize it and decide to pivot into a better feeling thought, a better, to move up to that ability. Joy is one of the highest vibrating emotions, right? Yeah. And so knowing that we have that choice. And as we each make those choices each and every day, it's that ripple effect. It, it, it goes out, that energy, that um, a vibration creates more of a vortex within our world. And that's how we become those influencers by us doing that each and every day in as many moments as we can. We're not perfect. We're not going to have it every moment of every day, but for more and more moments throughout our day. And the more we expand that, the greater we expand um, our influence in the world. Absolutely. You know, and I think what's great about that, I mean, we're all light workers. 
Mm-hmm. And we have the awareness. We know when we're not feeling good, we're not aligned. And we right. know how to get ourselves back in alignment after everything that we've done and learned and our communities and this and that. Um, but it's also being a, being understanding, I think, once you have that awareness of being understanding of, you can tell when someone's off or what, when they're out of alignment. But under sending them light and love without taking on their negative energy and without um, letting them letting them deal with it in their own way, no judgment, right? Yes. We know they've they're 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 dealing with their stuff the best mm-hmm. way they know how at that moment. But we don't yes. have to take them. No, we don't. We, we don't. And we don't have to rescue them. Right. We don't have to rescue them from what they're choosing to do in that moment because that's their life journey. And that has been a huge awareness for me as I've continued doing this work from when I retired to now. Um, If I went back into the school system, I would do some things differently, Um, you know, because I realized that I, you know, played rescuer a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, um, you know, I always wanted kids to stand in their power and I helped them to do that. But um, I think I would approach it a little bit differently with the skills and the tools that I have now. And, you know, that's our, that's our life's journey. Just cl- keep collecting those tools, but not in a toolbox that stay, stays closed. It's in that toolbox that stays open, that there's always that tool for that perfect um, situation we might be in, that opportunity that comes along uh, for us to learn to shift even our perspective, our thoughts, our words, our actions, our um, uh, um, emotions, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes. Yeah, There's definitely lots wonderful. of lots of tools that that I wish I had as a child. You know, no mm-hmm. regrets. You know, because right. my my life journey has brought me to this. But but I get to share those now with mm-hmm. my children to make yes. their life more productive, more more better. That sounds awesome. Yeah. More better. Yeah. More better. There you go. <laughs> Well, to to give them, if they're open to hearing it, right, it Mm -hmm. gives them that opportunity to not struggle in the way that we struggled um, with some of the baggage that we've held on to for X period of time. It shrinks the time that they may experience um, the discord, the discomfort, because they're open to learning new tools um, where they are. And that's the thing I found with kids at school, too, is they were open to learning new things um, and willing to try and apply them, you know, in um, so, and that's what, you know, people who are um, wanting to, de- to move into personal development and continue to up-level their lives, that, that's where they are too, more like kids are of being open mm-hmm. to learning new tools, learning new strategies. And they may not be comfortable at first, but that's part of the journey too. That's a, that's a great insight. We, I'm sure we weren't comfortable either, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. I, I could easily go back and say, you know, I wish I would have known all these things back when my daughter was little, I probably would have handled things differently. Right. Yeah. But the, the fact of the matter is she's in her early twenties and finding her way and we have the best mm-hmm. conversations now. Yeah. So, you know, you can share that awareness or share, share those things that are important at, yes. at no matter what age your kids are. That's so, right. Yeah, that's right. Spreading that's the awesome. joy and the love. That's Definitely. right. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Definitely. <laughs> Beth, what do you like most about your current path? What, what do you like that, what lights you up the most about the coaching you're doing and, and assisting Christy and, and what comes to mind? What, what's, what's the best part of all that right now? It's the connections. I, I'm just a connector. I love connecting with people and I love to witness their growth and their expansion. And if I can support them um, kind of uh, in whatever way it is, where it's just uh, having a conversation with them on the phone, doing a coaching session with a client um, and seeing them expand and be like, oh, I feel so much better at the end of the session, right? Um, and then see what they create through the time period that we work together. Um, knowing that Christy has what she needs to serve um, as the light worker who she is, 
um, and have the impact that she has, that just that just warms my heart. It just helps light me up <laughs> um, with such joy and um, wants me to or has me getting up each day to know that, that I can be of service in that way, um, especially for people that are very intentional. Like Kim and I, when we do um, calls to talk to people, Kim's like, I have never been in a job where people that we talk to are the most delightful people ever. Mm. It's not the snarky, you know, um, I, you know, it's like, you're calling me. Oh, wow. It's so <laughs> cool that you just called me today. <laughs> so, but, but it's again, the energy that you bring forth. If you bring forth that energy, you're going to have people that match that energy. And that's what I love is, you know, there's a continuing to up level, um, you know, it's just an honor and a joy every day with each person that I connect with. Awesome. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. More people need to, to learn that it is easy to choose, yes. you know, yes. it, it's simple. Sometimes it's not easy, you know, especially if they have baggage, but it is possible. And by being able to teach others these tools and, and be that example that that is very joyful. Yeah. Sherry, yeah. Yeah. do you have any other questions? I think she answered all my questions while she was talking. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> she answered that one. Hmm. I'll take another one. Oh, no, she answered that one. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I was catching your vibes there, Carrie. Yeah, you were, you were reading yeah. my mind. I there was. was a rule. You weren't supposed to read my mind yet. Well, you know, oh, we forgot I to think we, I think room. we spend time together and we just are picking up on that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I, I wish my husband would pick up on some of the things. <laughs> that would be joyful. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> It'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. Yes. Well, Beth, what, what cool projects or programs are you working on right now? What are you excited about? That's, that's happening in oh. your, your neck of the woods. Well, thanks Anything for asking. Share? Um, you know, right now, Kim and I live in our rolling home. This has been a dream of ours for 20 years. And we manifested it um, in stages. And they all didn't come together exactly of, at the times that we wish. But we are in Arizona right now. And we're looking forward to supporting Christy for an event um, that she's going to be doing, the Mystical Healing Experience here in Tucson with some other healers. And um, uh, so we're really looking forward to just being there and getting to be in the sunshine and the warmth mm -hmm. of Arizona. So I'm just really looking forward to continuing. I have some coaching clients that I work with. Um, I look forward to their sessions each week and um, the Desire Factor Coach movement that we have and just, um, you know, connecting with others um, and getting to meet uh, some of the coaches actually um, this weekend and then the weekend of the event, um, getting to meet uh, different uh, uh, people that we've met through the QSCA and Desire Factor Coaching and just working for Christy. So that's really kind of the projects I'm working on. My own business um, is uh, there's desires I have with wanting to continue to expand that, but I had to get this rolling home. I'm a cancer, so I'm, you know, very much about home. And, you know, so this has been a um, moving into our flow with being uh, portable and flexible, but on the road a lot. Um, we took the journey from Maryland in March um, to now here in Tucson. So um, that's kind of what's going on for me at the moment. <laughs> oh, that's Exciting. awesome. It's such an incredible journey. What a fun, what a fun thing. What a fun it, thing. it has been. And we learn so much and meet the coolest people, whether they're our neighbor at the campsite whether they are somebody that works in the office, somebody that we meet in the town, maybe one of the waitresses at a restaurant that we go to or something. And um, then of course, the people that we connect with through Christy Whitman International and, and through my own business, so. Amazing, fun, fun. Well, we're so excited that you came and had our conversation, had a conversation with us. You didn't have our conversation, we had a conversation. <laughs> yes. Boy. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. So our, you know, for the viewers that are going to watch this video, mm -hmm. uh, please put your comments below. We'd love to hear your feedback and your thoughts and, 
And if you can let us know, you know, how do you live with joy and passion? That would be great to know. Let's get the conversation started. Yes. And um, we'll. She has we'll a really cool it. mug. Look at hers. Oh, oh I rainbow like that. Thank you. Thank you. From one of our travels in, um, where were we? Destin, Florida. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice awesome awesome and if you guys want to check out um best information we'll be putting it in the link above that's usually above uh, usually where it is (laughs) (laughs) and we will see everybody in our next quick conversation awesome thank you so much Beth. thanks thank you we'll see you soon bye bye